Okay, um, hi, my name is Jennifer Brandt, and this is my post-surgery rehab project on the on a total shoulder replacement. Okay, so some background information on total shoulder replacement. Um, basically, it's when you remove the damaged areas of bone in the shoulder joint and replace them with parts made of metal and plastic, which then mimic the ball and socket joint of the shoulder, um, which is done for lots of different reasons, which I'll go into. Um, and then there's three different types of this specific shoulder replacement, which is the anatomic total shoulder replacement, the reverse total shoulder replacement, and then there's the partial shoulder replacement. Okay, so some reasons that people get a total shoulder replacement are osteoarthritis, which is um, damage to the cartilage, which obviously may need a smoother joint than at that point. Um, some rotator cuff injuries, fractures, which would be to the upper end of the humerus, rheumatoid arthritis, and other inflammatory disorders, which are um, caused by an overactive immune system, and then osteonecrosis, um, which is like basically affects the blood flow, which is bad for the bones. Okay, so basically the surgery for a typical shoulder replacement, the way it works is the surgeon puts um, some plastic, like a plastic lining, where the cartilage used to be, and it's going to act as cartilage. And then at the tip of where the humerus used to be, they put um, like a long metal stem with like a ball on the end, which is going to act as the ball and socket joint. Okay, so basically the way that rehab works post-op. Um, so phase one is zero to six weeks after surgery. And the goals of this phase are to protect the surgery, like the area, ensure the wound that it heals, and then present, prevent shoulder stiffness. So keep it moving, but don't overdo it by any means. Um, basically, just some like pendulum exercises, some arm elevation, um, internal rotation, and some shoulder blade pinches. Okay, so during phase two, which is approximately four to six weeks post-op, um, the goals for this time frame are to protect the shoulder and avoid overstressing the repair, restore full passive range of motion, gradually restore active motion, and reestablish dynamic shoulder stability. So here's all the exercises that you would do during this, and here's pictures. I'm not going to list them because that would take forever. But basically during this, it's not real like intense workouts. It's just keeping the arm moving to, um, like before, not let it be stiff and to, like it says up here, restore passive range of motion. Okay, so moving on to phase three, um, which is approximately 10 to 12 weeks post-op. Um, the goals of this time are to protect the shoulder, like as always, that's always gonna be a main goal, um, regain, regain full range of motion, and then gradual restoration of shoulder strength, um, which is kind of the big change in this one is you're kind of starting to do more strength exercises. So they're using bands and stuff like that. And you're doing shrugs and whatnot, which is actually like activating the muscles now instead of just getting in sort of like a stretch and keeping it not like tight. Okay, so moving on to stage four, um, which you don't begin before 12 weeks post-surgery. Um, and this time the goals are to maintain active range of motion, continue shoulder strengthening exercises and to gradually return to more functional activities basically you do everything before but you have more um target goals of things that you want to reach and then also um like integrate pool exercises and definitely progress with strengthening okay so moving on to the fifth and final stage um, which is returning to activity this is usually around 16 weeks post-op um, the goals around this time are to improve strength of the overall shoulder, um, to develop more control of your shoulder complex, and to yet again improve functional activities. So basically you're kind of doing the same idea um, with exercises as before, but it's um, progressed definitely more. All right, so moving on to what a reverse shoulder replacement is. Um, basically the difference between a conventional and reversed is where, at least from a surgical standpoint, is where the um, ball and the socket are attached. So in a conventional, the ball, like I said, goes on the end of the humerus and the socket or the plastic goes where the cartilage was. But in a reversed, the socket or where cartilage is goes at the end of the humerus and then the ball attaches where the socket used to be.
Okay, so so in comparison between these two surgeries um, with like pros and cons. So a standard shoulder replacement, um, all the same pros as we already talked about, but cons, um, it has a longer rehab and it's not super specific to one type of injury, which is a good thing, but um, reverse is specific kind of. Um, the pros of reverse are it's much less pain and it restores more range of motion in the shoulder. It has shorter rehab and it's better for rotator cuff injuries because um, it causes them to no longer be like necessary because it relies so heavily on the deltoid once you have this surgery. Um, and then the cons are it's you kind of lose the ability to reach behind your back and you know normal surgical cons. Okay, and then finally is the partial replacement. Basically, it's the same thing as a full, except there is no plastic to go where the cartilage is. It's just this ball that gets replaced, the end of the um, humerus. So it's the socket is still left intact. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.